welcome to the Pelican Brief with your host, David Tapman. Welcome to the Pelican Brief. I am your host, David Tapman. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Uh, we have a special guest in studio. Uh, we have a candidate for Louisiana House of Representatives, uh, District 71 in Livingston Parish, Jim Norhead. Welcome uh, to the show, Jim. Thank you, David. Glad to be here. Well, Looking we're glad that yeah. we're, we're glad to have you, and we're particularly excited about you offering yourself for public service. You know, it's a it's well, a big deal, you. and we need good people doing that. If we want good government, we've got to do those yeah. things. So and I'm glad you said public service because I consider myself a public servant, not a politician. Good, I good. Wor I work for the people. We need we need lots of those. So, mm -hmm. um, so why don't you take this opportunity to uh, introduce yourself to our audience? Okay. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm Jim Norrit. I'm running for state representative for District 71. That's the Walker and Denham Springs area. Uh, it encompasses Denham Springs north to Lockhart Road. Uh, the north side of Lockhart becomes another district, and, and from Lockhart south side of that down all the way to the uh, river is a uh, is this district. And then over to the Walker area, most of the Walker area, except for one little sliver that uh, Mr. Sherman Max district goes through, on that and uh, goes to the dividing line uh, going to the east is Walker South, uh, 447 South, going down that way and it goes down all the way to the where you turn to go to Port Vincent uh, at the circle there. So that's roughly what the uh, the district encompasses on that. And uh, I grew up in Baton Rouge, uh, went to Broadmoor High School, um, went to LSU, graduated from LSU, um, moved to Denham. Uh, to to the Denham and Livingston area and, and Walker and Watson area uh, a little over 30 years ago. Uh, my wife and I built our home out there, and that was home and stuff and all. Uh, I am a Christian. I'm a Republican. I'm conservative. Um, my wife, uh, I was living up in the Watson area, and I, became, I was complaining about something, and uh, my wife said, well, instead of complaining about it, why don't you do something about it? So I ran for parish council and mm -hmm. won. So then I had to do something about it and all, but uh, that got my feet uh, wet and, and learning how things work in Livingston Parish on the, on the political side on, on that. Uh, my wife passed away in 2016, oh, and so uh, I uh, ended up moving down to the southern uh, part, of the south of Denham Springs, and um, people kept after me to meet this other lady, and uh, uh, finally, you know, I said, no, I'm not interested and all like that, and um, her husband passed away in 2019. Wow. And uh, we finally, I finally gave in to my friends bugging me, and uh, we hit it off, and uh, now we're engaged. Well, and congratulations. Stuff, and, uh, thank you. So the Lord blessed me twice with two good women. One less on uh, eligible so, bachelor in the world. That's true. Huh? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did serve. Uh, I did something. Uh, I felt the need to serve um, again, you know, after the parish council time frame there. And um, actually before that, I uh, went to, and joined the uh, Army National Guard on that uh uh, we were activated for Desert Storm, but the, the regular Army did such a good job that we didn't have to leave the United States mm. on that. Uh, we did help with some of the disaster areas and stuff and all like that. So that was a, a learning experience there as well on that. Uh, then uh, professionally, uh, I started working uh, back in 1980s fooling with computers and computer programming and all this kind of stuff. Uh, went on and continued on up from that to system design and then project management and stuff. And then in 1999, I opened my own uh, consulting business, uh, working on large uh, computer systems for state governments. Okay. Uh, I did a lot of work for Louisiana as well as other states, uh, helping them uh, modernize their Medicaid system or okay. other systems and all like that, or bringing in, helping them uh, um, write proposals, request for proposals uh, to get uh, bids and stuff and helping them evaluate. Then on the flip side, I also worked for vendors, not at the same time, but uh, I would work with vendors, help them respond to proposals, and then when they win the contract, I would help them install it. Oh, uh, as, as a project manager, that uh, fancy term for, you know, you kind of you know, stay on track, you, know, you assign tasks, are you staying on schedule, you staying within budget, uh, how are you doing timeline-wise, stuff like that, the usual task assignments and, right. and stuff and all like that. Um, the last six years, uh, I worked... Uh, for a company uh, called Public Consulting Group, on that um, they did um, 
the IVNV contract for the independent verification and validation for the new Medicaid upgrades for Louisiana on their new system and stuff. So I'm familiar with the department heads uh, uh, at the, the Department of Division of Medicaid and Department of Children and Family Services. Uh, um, worked with legislators before, uh, both on a parish council. Uh, when I worked with our congressional delegations, I uh, went to Washington to try to get money for mm -hmm. funding and stuff, as well as the state legislature and all. Uh, I've spoken in uh, committees and stuff and all before. I'm familiar with the processes that the state legislature goes through. So uh, I think that's an advantage for me. Uh, uh, it'll be a plus for me, I hope. Uh, I can hit the ground running uh, mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Um, uh, I heard that uh, several of the uh, gubernatorial candidates, they plan on calling a special session right after they're inaugurated. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to represent the, the people from day one Good. and be able to get in there and to do that. Um, so what made you want to be a state representative? I mean, A, thank yeah. you for your service already, right? Oh, your military you. service yeah. uh, to our country and then for your service as a, a local elected official, which is can uh, can be uh, challenging. I'll use that <laughs> word. Or yeah. I was going to say painful, but yeah. we'll go with challenging. Uh, it was, it yeah. was a learning experience yeah. there. And, uh, you know, what, what really made the day, I mean, you, you put up with a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and all, but when you get an 85 year old lady call you and say you know i've been trying for two years to get something done and you got it done in two days right that's what makes makes sure. it. that's what what makes it all worth it right on that and stuff but uh i wanted to uh to help the people in my district i mean i grew up in louisiana i'm mm -hmm. from louisiana uh, i wanted to give back to my state and, and to, to my country as well on that um I felt the need to serve, and that's why I joined the, you know, the military uh, portion of that. I ran for office trying to make a, a difference and, and change some things when, on the parish council. Um, I retired last year, uh, so I can be a full-time representative. Uh, it's not like I'll be trying to balance uh, working and doing this on the side. Um, so I'll be available pretty much full time for anything that the people need me to do. That's awesome. So uh, one of the things we like to do is a little game we play here and we say, OK, last night you were elected to the Louisiana House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And I know that actually procedurally it takes a while before you right. take office and everything. But let's just pretend, you know, tomorrow's your first day on the job. What are the things that you want to do as a state representative in District 71 and really across the state? Well, one of my first priorities is the safety and education of our children. Uh, that's number one for me on that, uh, followed by uh, obviously flooding in Livingston Parish is a major issue, as well as the road and infrastructure. Um, the first thing I would like to do, though, is after talking with their coroner and stuff and all, I learned that, uh, um, you know, we have a large drug problem with fentanyl and all, and it's only getting worse on it. But that is not part of a standard drug test. Mm. If you get uh, pulled over for DUI or something, or if you go, you're go, you sick in the hospital and they run a drug test, it's not part of the panel mm. that they check for on that. And I was kind of shocked at that. I mean, you check for marijuana, which it won't kill you, but mm -hmm. fentanyl will mm -hmm. on that. So that would be one of the things I would push right off the bat to include that as well as these uh, fast drip tests uh, mm -hmm. that they can uh, uh, they can use, the EM paramedics can use, mm -hmm. making those more available for the paramedics and emergency staff so they can test and find out if someone's in the middle of an overdose or, or right. is suffering from the effects of that. Um, that would be something I want to change on right away. I'll also, um, I'm a firm believer we've got to get back to the basics of education on our kids. Um, we've got to stop all this woke stuff and the CRT stuff and, and prepare them for life, mm -hmm. prepare them for jobs. Uh, we need new businesses to come in here, and they need good, qualified people mm -hmm. in order for them to come and locate here yeah. on that. So uh, the safety of our kids, uh, uh, doing stuff with this stuff, for the drug stuff, that's one of the first things on that. Um, it's also the safety at the schools. Yeah. We've got to look at that and, and, and just prepare our kids for life in a much better way. I mean, our 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 competitors and our enemies, they're preparing their kids uh, to be lawyers and doctors and plumbers and welders, and we're worried about what pronoun we're going right. to use, you know? Right. Not to mention all this gender stuff. That, mm -hmm. that's, you know, you're way too young to be fooling with right. that. And wait till they're 18 years old before they start doing anything right. with that. Yeah, so. I mean, education is a great equalizer. We know that if you, uh, if, you know, your chance of success in life, 
uh, is exponentially better if uh, you reach or attain certain right. educational levels. Right. And, um, and that's one of the things that's been driving the, the push of people coming into Livingston Parish. They have such a good public school system. Yeah. I went to public schools, my kids went to public schools, and my grandkids went to public schools. Yeah. So I'm a believer in public school system. Well, my I'm good there. friend Rogers Pope, I remembered all the yeah. time that he was superintendent, and I really uh, thought he was a great guy and uh, had be- developed a relationship with him mm-hmm. and uh, learned a lot about what his philosophies were. And uh, yeah. he, he was a, a, a gem. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, well, and an uh, interesting side note, uh, his wife, uh, Pat Pope, she taught school at uh, at the high school where I went to at Broadmoor okay. at that time. So, yeah. Yeah. so you were a buck, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know the Bucks. Uh, yeah. I grew. I went to high school in New Orleans, and we would play you all occasionally, yeah, occasionally. in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. So um, so a lot of our audience really likes to hear from the candidates. Uh, how are you going to win the race? What are you doing to, um, you know? I think you have two opponents yeah. in the race. Yeah, I have two other opponents. Yeah. Um, they're both uh, good Christian people. They're both good fellows. Um, I think I'm better qualified and have more the, the experience and the qualifications that sets me aside mm-hmm. from it. Um, I'm doing a pretty much a grassroots campaign. Um, I'm doing. I put up signs, you know. I, I'm you know knocking on doors, handing out flyers. Uh, this morning at 6 a.m., I was at a restaurant meeting with folks and talking with them uh, on that. Uh, I'm not going to flood the uh, mailboxes with a lot of mail outs. I may send one, or maybe two. But that's it. Uh, I find that if I talk to you, I think that you'll see that I'm sincere and that you'll vote for me right. on that. And and I like talking with the folks in the district because they they ask me things I hadn't thought about. Right. You know, and I find out what's really important to them. You know, and I was kind of surprised. You know, being in in Livingston Parish and the condition of our roads and the flooding problems. You know, you would think that's the most important things, but it's education. Yeah. They're worried about their children yeah. and what's going to happen with their kids. Yeah. That's a. It really is a big deal. And look, the, um, I I tease all the time about public service because I did it myself. But really, campaigning's fun. It's a lot of work, and you know, there's a lot of fatigue involved. But yeah. getting to talk to people, yeah. and uh, hearing, uh, you learn so much, yes. and you mm-hmm. also learn that uh, you know issues may change neighborhood to neighborhood, right? We, yeah. uh, in terms of what you do, but we clearly in, yeah. in Louisiana, education is always at the top of the list. Yeah. And so, um, well, well, we've, you know, um, there was an issue that came up, you know, there was a, uh, pay raise for teachers put, um, uh, and it failed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was a lot of, it was the way it was presented and wasn't done very, very well. Right. They have since you know, gone back and re looking at that and stuff and all. Um, I do support a teacher pay raise. Uh, once they get the, the kinks and all ironed out of it, um, I wouldn't even, I'm not even, a, you know, it wouldn't bother me if we did some kind of a supplemental uh, uh, pay raise like you do for firemen and police mm-hmm. for teachers, as well as like this past legislative session, they gave them a thousand dollar stipend. Why not make that a permanent, yeah. you know, an annual stipend? I mean, they, they pay for all their school supplies and stuff lots of times out of their pocket. Yeah. They work long hours. So why shouldn't you help them out a little bit more? So my wife is a retired 33-year educator. Okay. We spent uh, every year before school started, we would go to what I'm not going to name a store, but you probably know yeah. which one. We would go there, get a basket, and we'd spend several hundred, sometimes a thousand dollars, on school supplies because that's what she needed to get her job done. And, and she don't get reimbursed for that. No, no. And uh, and I would just tell you this, and this is just an opinion, but a stipend's not a raise. A that's stipend right. is one-time money, and it just doesn't work. And um, well, I it, was hoping it'd be a yearly stipend. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. But just and, a one, it's something. It's something anyway. It's yeah. a start. You know, the, the challenge so. with stipends is, is that if they go away the next year, it's really a pay cut, and yeah. then you know, so yeah. on. But you know, I'm sure that if you have no other choice, you take a stipend. But it seems like it, recently we've seen that even across the state, yeah. where you're seeing more and more of people. Uh, offering stipends and people are sort of getting wise to that and saying, uh, you know, it doesn't really impact my retirement. doesn't really impact, uh, my, I don't know if I'm going to get it next year. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a lot harder to decrease someone's salary than it is to, you know, That's take true. a stipend That's away. True. So, but yeah, yeah I, there's no the doubt. And I think my wife appreciated the stipends when yeah. she got them. Um, well, you, you know, part of the problem is, um, with the state constitution, the way it is, 
there's only two areas in the budget that you can cut. No, it's I know. Education and healthcare, yeah. which to me are the two worst areas. You know, uh, you want to you want to educate your people. You want to make the, a bit new businesses come here. That's one area you shouldn't cut. No. And in healthcare, you know, especially you know dealing with elderly and stuff and all like that, or health in general. Why do you want to cut that? So mm-hmm. those are something we've got to look at no, changing. No doubt about it. And, yeah. and there's plenty of change. You know, we're, we're last than a lot and first than very little. Mm-hmm. And so we've got to change that. And yeah. uh, you and I talked about that a little bit before the show. So this is the opportunity that I give the, our guests to say anything else that we may not have covered that you would like to cover. Okay. Uh, any other things that you want to talk about, either in your district, your campaign, about what you think about Louisiana or the future? Uh, this um, is kind of your, your moment. Okay. Well, uh, um, you know, we've talked briefly about uh, education. Uh, roads are a major concern. Uh, we're infrastructure. We're behind. We're way behind, way behind. on that. Uh, they haven't built. They uh, Livingston Parish hasn't built a new road in almost a hundred years. Wow. On that, other than the interstate coming through or mm-hmm. something. Um, there are some roads that need to be uh, repaired. There's some roads that need to be you know, new roads that need to be brought in. Um, I plan on working with the parish and uh, government and the city uh, city governments and coming up with a new priority list and a new plans and doing stuff with um, on that. I don't want to study it to death like some things happen. You know, some things are no-brainers. I mean, you can sit at some intersections, and it don't have to send there for a year. You can sit there for a week and see it as a problem, you know. So hopefully we can get those moving and find funds to start doing some of that. Flooding, um, major problem in, in Livingston, and everything centers around the Amiot River. Mm-hmm. Uh, Amiot River runs into Lake Maripal, most of Livingston Parish empties into Amiot River or Tickfar River, but it ultimately ends up in Lake Maripal. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time that the Amiot River was dredged was in the early 1950s by mm-hmm. the Corps of Engineers. Mm-hmm. They dredged it to a uniform depth of four feet. A lot of those areas now are six inches deep. Mm. Uh, the mouth of the river, which they're just now starting to try to clean up and dredge a little bit, you, you'll, you'll run your boat aground trying to go into Lake Maripal. Mm. It's that shallow and, mm. and all. And then if you get out of your boat to push yourself off the ground, you'll sink up to your waist in mud. Right. And all. So uh, they're trying to uh, do something about that and channel the water out. And uh, that's one of the areas that uh, we've, we've got to do more on. Right. And then, of course, uh, clearing up and uh, getting rid of all the trees and limbs and mm-hmm. stuff and all in our creeks and everything else yeah. as well on that. So, and that takes money on that. Uh, the diversion canal, the Comete Diversion Canal, is a great first step. Uh, it'll help some, but it's not going to no. solve it all. Mm-hmm. So we've got to continue working on that. And I would hope that uh, with the uh, Amit uh, River Basin Commission and the Watershed Initiative, those are com- communities I would like to be involved in and, and, and areas I would try to make a difference on yeah. On that. For, um, they, um, that's two the big areas here. The education, we talked about that on that. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, I am pro-Second Amendment. Uh, I am against uh, all the government mandates that shut us down for way too long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would even propose one of the things you would talk about it, is looking into, you know, how do we prevent that from happening in the future? Well, you know, one might, might be that, you know, if the governor declares a state of emergency, it's only good for 120 days. Mm-hmm. And then if, if he wants to extend it, he's got to go before a committee mm-hmm. of the legislature and justify why he wants to keep it. Mm-hmm. And they vote on it. And if mm-hmm. they agree with him, then you know, extend it for another 120 right. days. Other, I don't think the intent was for him to be able to just shut the state down for a year or more right. on that. So hopefully we can do something to, to improve yeah. that on that, especially uh, shutting down churches. Yeah, I mean, yeah, come on, that's that's uh, that's way way over yeah. unconstitutional, on that. Um, and I do support uh, veterans and seniors. I'll do what I can to try and make their lives a little bit better and stuff, and and make it easier healthcare wise and stuff. I've worked with medic uh, Medicaid for uh, roughly twenty years, uh, in one form or another. Uh, so I would like to serve on their the Medicaid Oversight Committee. Uh, For those of you that don't know, that's the largest portion of the state budget. Um, And there's uh, roughly a million people on the rolls in Medicaid right right now. It's 75% funded by the federal government and 25% funded by the state. Uh, You have to meet certain uh, requirements to be certified by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. Um, I worked with them. I've helped with the certification processes before on that. also, uh, I've worked with FEMA in the past uh, after Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Um, I worked uh, helping setting up uh, or worked for a company that helped set up 60,000 of those infamous FEMA uh, Tra- trailers, trailers and yeah. stuff in around South Louisiana. And then I went to work uh, for the Governor's Road Home Program okay. and helped uh, manage that. It was a multi-billion dollar program yeah. to help everybody rebuild their homes and stuff. 
So uh, uh, I got kind of a varied background, but I think that uh, will help prepare me and uh, make me uh, more successful in the legislature. Yeah. Well, I appreciate, again, you offering yourself for public service. Again, yeah. I, uh, there's not a lot of us or you know people to do it, and then when you find a good quality individual with a good background, then it's even better. You know? well, thank you. So why don't you tell our audience how they can get in touch with you? Well, I, um, I do have a website. It's my name, all one word, Jim Norrid, the number four, staterep.com. Uh, you can go there, or you can go to my Facebook site, which is uh, Jim Norred for State Rep, uh, the number four state rep. Or you can call me on my cell phone, 225-933-8855. That's my personal cell phone, 225-933-8855. would love to hear from you. Well, thank you, Jim. Thank you for coming in. I know you're busy. Okay. You were campaigning uh, this morning, and I know you'll be campaigning more, and it's the weekend. So, mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. that's when you get all your walking in and you're oh, knocking Oh, well, I've been in. doing a lot of walking. <laughs> I just remember to vote for uh, Jim Norrie for state representative, District 71. I'm number 63 on the ballot. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for being here. So thank you. that is our show for today. We are the Pelican Brief. You can find us on all of the podcasting platforms. Okay. Uh, if you are uh, watching... Uh, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all of them. Uh, you can also, if you're listening, watch us on YouTube TV. We do a video version. Uh, on YouTube, we are at the Pelican Brief 225. Uh, you can also email us. Uh, at the Pelican Brief 225 at gmail.com. So that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Pelican Brief. Thank you all. The Pelican Brief is an off script production. <laughs>